Thank you so much for joining us. Um, really excited to talk to you today. My name is Gabe, um, and I'm in my third year uh, of college um, at Bowdoin College, which is in Maine, um, and I'm studying earth science and chemistry. Very nice to meet you, Gabe. Hello, my name is Marie. I am a senior at Columbia University where I'm studying computer science and I'm really excited to talk to you today. Thank you. I'm also excited to talk with you. My name is uh, Gianluca uh, Grimalda. I used to be an employer of the Keele Institute for the World Economy, but as you might have heard, I've been fired because of my refusal to come back from a fieldwork in Papua New Guinea by plane. So that was a rather hard uh, decision or maybe an easy decision to make but with the heavy consequences so i was uh, here in uh, in a small island in the middle of the pacific ocean called the bougainville bougainville is a uh, part of the solomon island archipelago but it's uh, under the administration at the moment of papua new guinea and this is where i i live if you can see my my pointer i i live in northern germany so um, traveling by plane uh, would have emitted about five tons of uh, CO2. Uh, and just to give you an idea, five tons of CO2 is the, it's more than uh, what the average citizen in the world emits in one year. So it's quite a lot of um, emissions. The main reason why I do it is it's really to uh, reduce my uh, emissions, but I must say that it's also a great experience from the human point of view because you get to know a lot of people uh, who <laughs> otherwise you would never meet and what i have learned is that in every place there is always a somebody who is going to help you and uh, yeah that ma makes me feel really that I, I can be at home more or less in every place uh, of the world in which i am Would you just be able to tell us a little bit about the people in, in Bougainville and um, the community and like how, how climate change has affected them there? What really uh, worried uh, me and, uh, and yeah, many people there is the fact that uh, there are longer and longer spells of drought. So normally uh, what they call the dry season so a period in which there is no rain. Uh, so of course, that's really a problem for many people. Um, normally, it, it would last uh, maybe three weeks. And now the dry season can last even six weeks. And when um, this happens, for some villages, this means no food because they cannot, you know, they cannot uh, water food that they grow, which is mainly potatoes and uh, bananas. Um, and um, vegetables and fruit. And so, yeah, that really worries me because, um, you know, I know that uh, in, um, in the, the climate, the ecosystems are characterized by what we know as a tipping point. So tipping point means uh, that uh, a system looks relatively stable uh, and then all of a sudden it collapses. And uh, when temperature exceeds some thresholds, uh, the system really uh, is irreversibly lost and there is nothing that uh, you can do to get it back. So I'm really, really worried that uh, as temperatures increase even more and even faster uh, than what they have done so far, uh, many of uh, these villages will really suffer uh, more of um, uh, l l food shortages. Even now in, in our service, we, we have one question that asks, um, how much, uh, how many uh, days over the last uh, month uh, you, you and your family went to sleep uh, without eating the whole day? And about 15% of the people say that that uh, is something that uh, happened to them. One presentation that I made with the school, I think I, I gave presentations more or less in a, maybe about 10 schools. Um, so they, they do talk about climate change. So they do have 
climate change in their curriculum, but only at the uh, sixth year of their education. Uh, I also showed, uh, I think and this is probably the, the really the hardest to take picture of all. Uh, this is a, from a study published in PNAS, one of the most prestigious scientific journals, in which they show which areas might become uninhabitable by 2070. Of course, it is, uh, I would say this is the worst case scenario, but there is a possibility, a non-negligible possibility, that the areas that are marked in black here uh, will become completely uninhabitable. So the, basically, most areas uh, close to the equator I mean, we know that a lot of uh, climate migration happens uh, within uh, the country, but here there are entire countries, like uh, entire Brazil, entire African countries uh, that are, are going to become un un uninhabitable. So for sure, there will be international migration too. And uh, even some areas of uh, Papua New Guinea will be, uh, could uh, uh, suffer these uh, um, these uh, yeah, very bad experience. So for me, that was really the hardest thing to, 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 to tell them, but you know, that they have to be informed um, about that. I, I also wanted to show them the, uh, the big, big inequality that exists in the world about emissions. And that this is a, a graph taken from Oxfam. You know, Oxfam has been very active in uh, computing uh, the yeah the, the the share of emissions uh, that uh, people do according to their wealth level and uh, I mean the, the results are really stunning so about fifty percent uh, the the ten percent uh, of the people who is uh, the richest in the world emits fifty percent of emissions they talk about climate change. Uh, uh, relatively late in their curricula, but yeah, at least at some point they, they do uh, talk about that. So yes, I must now stop sharing my my videos and uh, yeah, so, so my, that's my question to you. So what, what what is the degree to which you in New York talk about uh, climate change in your schools and in your courses? Um, so yeah, I would say that, um, well, where I went to high school in New York, um, we had one teacher who, like a uh, physics teacher who incorporated climate change into um, some lessons and I think is now teaching an elective, um, not a required course, but an elective on um, climate science. Um, and even when when last year um my brother was in high school and he went to the same high school i did when there was uh the wildfires in canada and the you know school was remote for a couple of days in new york because of the smoke um none of the teachers mentioned like the school cancellation um in any relation to, to climate change. Um, so yeah, I would say it's, it's very much lacking from like, um, high school and like, you know, kindergarten through bef like the entire kind of school system, um, before university, I would say is very lacking in climate education. Yeah. yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, what, what about you, Mary? I didn't go to school in New York. I went to school in Wisconsin. And everything that I learned about climate change going into college, I learned from my friends. I learned from, like, social media. I learned from, like, doing basically my own research, watching YouTube videos. None of the classes that I took in high school I don't remember them mentioning climate change unless the students specifically brought it up in maybe like a chemistry class or a biology class. Yeah. 